నవయుగం వెంకట దశలో సో మాతంగ ఘటా తరంగం ప్రణాంబుధిం ది పోషన్ ఆఫ్ ది బ్యాటిల్ ఫీల్డ్ ఇన్ విచ్ ది సునామి ఆఫ్ ది హెడ్ ఆఫ్ ఎలిఫెంట్స్ మాతంగా ఇస్ ఎలిఫెంట్ అండ్ సో ఇట్ ఇస్ కమింగ్ మాతంగి ఇస్ లక్ష్మి దట్ ఈస్ ది మీనింగ్ ఆఫ్ ది మాతంగి బికాస్ వెర్ ఎవర్ యు హావ్ లక్ష్మి యు హావ్ ఎన్ ఎలిఫెంట్ అన్ ఎదర్ సైడ్ అనౌంట్ దట్స్ వై లక్ష్మి ఇస్ కాల్ మాతంగి మాతంగా ఇస్ ఎలిఫెంట్ అండ్ సో దీస్ పీపుల్ they are capable of uh, facing such an attack in my opinion so in my opinion they are not a great warriors they are not sure us mai saptame but tika kara clarify it mad drushti eti avata in my opinion they are not a great warriors then who are great warriors there is another battle another uh, ocean what is that ocean dehendriyam bodhim that is the ocean the body and the sensations this uh, body poses innumerable problems so when it is healthy it it has its uh, share of problems and when it is sick what to speak of it when it is healthy it wants decorations it wants uh, comforts and uh, outward showiness so many things it wants when it is healthy when it is sick then it is it wants uh, it wants so many other things so this is body then indriya the sense organs the eyesight eyesight is a huge problem it helps to see things but then uh, it creates its own set of problems like projections desires etc and then hearing the faculty of hearing you know shri krishna says in gita shruti vipruti pannate yada sthasyati nischala samadha vachala buddhi tada yogam avapsyasi you will gain yoga only then whenever yada and tada are there in the verse that implies a lot of emphasis because when yada is there tada is implied you need not have it when tada is there yada you need not have it but when shri krishna uses both of them then lot of emphasis yada shruti vipruti pannate yada sthasyati nishchala so he says your intellect is totally deluded and spoiled vipruti pannana vipruti patti means viparita jnanam pratipatti is jnanam vipruti patti is viparita jnanam it is filled with all kinds of wrong notions by hearing to things again and again and again that is the shruti to listen to things and you listen and listen and listen people uh, either they talk and talk and talk or they listen and listen and listen and thereby their uh, entire intellect it is like a bag with this intellect it is filled with vasanas and all these vasanas are derived through the faculty of hearing that is how he looks at it shri krishna looks at it like that shruti vipruti pannate so such buddhi can you make it stable It is not easy. With so much impurity filled into it, it will not remain stable. It becomes very toxic, the intellect. So can you make it stable? It is very toxic, the intellect. So can you make it stable? It is very toxic, the intellect. The Buddha should remain. Stasiti is plural. As of now, it is not so. In the future, not plural, future. In the future, if you can make it stable, Nishchala. You don't want to allow it to shake. You don't allow it to shake. just stays fixed without any movement when that happens tada yogam avapsyasi then you will gain communion with ishvara so like that he says therefore the sense organs like hearing then taste buds taste buds sir the kalolam that they create the kalolam means the type of tsunamis the taste buds create the person gets a heart attack all because of the taste buds if the taste buds are not misused then there is no reason why a normal person should have get a heart attack diabetes the mother of all diseases is a direct outcome of taste buds tsunami is created by these taste buds and uh, people uh, fly across the continents uh, to enjoy good food <laughs> French food festival so go to Paris like that
they fly across. And for the sake of eating and drinking. So this, these are the tsunamis which are created in person's life, Deha Indriya. And in these tsunamis, I mean in this battlefield, this is the battlefield, Deha and Indriya is the battlefield. Then the real tsunami is the mind, Manas Tarangam. It is coming, the mind is coming. Tsunami after tsunami, mind. It is a tormentor sitting inside, mind. The amount of confusion it creates, the amount of suffering it causes, no snow bombs. People fight with each other bitterly and they hate, they destroy each other. And uh, imagine how one can hate the other so badly and how one can uh, engage a, a, so totally in this battle against the other person. People fight, groups of people fight, communities first fight with each other. All this uh, animosity, all this ill will, it originates in the mind, in the form of tsunamis. It just originates in the mind, manas tarangam. And those who could withstand this tsunami of the mind, in the battlefield of the body and the sense organs, they are the shuras. In my opinion, they are the real shuras. Means you may command an army, but you are not able to conquer the body, the sense organs in the mind. Napoleon could command an army, but he could not command his own body mind. It may not be Napoleon, just I gave you an example. So, Duryodhana was a great warrior. He could command armies, but he is a victim of his own impure mind. So like that, even Ravana is a great warrior, but uh, some specific bad vasanas brought him down and he could not overcome those vasanas. Therefore, it is the mind uh, uh, which is uh, uh, which creates all these tsunamis. Then the Shura, the warrior, I mean uh, the person of great prowess who conquers this mind. So what is the what is the support system? What are the weapons that you use to conquer this mind in the battlefield of body and the senses? To conquer this mind, the attacks posed by the mind, what are the weapons? The weapons are Viveta Vairagyadina. So the Tekakara is uh, explaining. So use the weapons of Viveka and Vairagya. So intense dispassion, that is Vairagya, and Viveka is uh, the discrimination. So uh, so the discrimination is between Kshetra and Kshetrajna. You see, the discrimination is like this. I am putting it, it is a very known discrimination only, Atma and Atma, but I am putting it in very practical terms. The discrimination is, you do not define yourself. You do not, to put it in a different way, you do not derive the sense of self. That is what it is. You do not derive the sense of self from the body. Just don't do it. The sense of self. So, from the body, and uh, from the sense organs, you just don't derive the sense of self from the sense organs. You see, that is not very crucial, it doesn't appear crucial for those who are blessed with all the sense organs which are functioning properly. But suppose, you just imagine, a person uh, suddenly becomes blind, then uh, he will die with frustration of the clear caused by that blindness. Because it is not that the eyes became blind, it is that I became blind. That means he derives the sense of self from a given sense of that. He is able to hear, he can be happy about it. He is able to hear, he is able to pick up smells, and he is able to taste, he is able to touch. Only he is not able to see. So why not just uh, be a witness to the uh, to the blindness. Why should you derive the sense of self from the blindness? 
बट सो अहम कान अहम अंधा कान मीन्स वन आई का अंधा बहुत ऐसा ऐसा दिस इज इन अध्यास वर्ष सो पीपल डिराइव द सेंस ऑफ सेल्फ फ्रॉम द सेंस ऑर्गन एंड देन पीपल डिराइव द सेंस ऑफ सेल्फ फ्रॉम द ऑर्गन ऑफ एक्शन आई एम लिव आई एम आई डोंट हैव लेंग्स एक्सेट्रा दे डिराइव द सेंस ऑफ सेल्फ फ्रॉम द ऑर्गन ऑफ एक्शन सो देन बॉडी ऑलरेडी कवर्ड एंड देन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट दे डिराइव द सेंस ऑफ सेल्फ फ्रॉम एक्शन so people uh, define themselves based on doing but uh, they fail to appreciate that the doing is not atma atma is being not doing therefore uh, uh, so uh, when you take yourself to be a doer you are wrongly identifying with uh, with uh, the anatma that which is not atma so this is how these identifications uh, they make us suffer endlessly once uh, you identify yourself with doing and establish yourself wrongly as a doer then you are in for an endless uh, trouble uh, the trouble is not doing doing is not the trouble the trouble is uh, identifying with doing or deriving the sense of self from doing for example i say i am a teacher means what i am doing some job job doing is fine that, that is all right it's a good job only not a bad job not a wrong job you doing a good job only that is great but saying that i am a teacher means i am already deriving the sense of self from the job that i am doing i am a teacher i am an author i am a writer all those things you do a thing and derive the sense of self from that this is the, the aviveka so all of that has to be negated uh, by by the fire of knowledge the fierce fire of knowledge can destroy all this aviveka so this is how viveka and vairagya they are the weapons with which you will stand with the help of which you will stand the onslaught of uh, the tsunami of the mind namaskaranga can you do that can you command the body mind can you conquer over the body mind then you are a real shura you are a real soldier of progress so that is the rest this is quoted by a few scholars occasionally and many would quote it because it is coming from the depths of yoga vasistha somewhere at last in the yoga vasistha text you know to be the text it is somewhere in between you find this verse but the dosh who know it they do quote it and i say one more time taranti matam gadhata tarangam taranti matam gadhata nam budhiye mayite na shura then there is a printing mistake ranam budhim you have to put a dot on the top this is there okay शूरास्त मनस्तरंगम देहेन्द्रिय बोधिमीम तरती वेरी ब्यूटिफुल वर्स देन नेक्स्ट वर्स दिस टॉपिक ऑफ दिस चैप्टर दिस कॉल निरोध निश्रेयस विरोधी भावा मीन्स दोज थॉट्स और मेंटल पैटर्न्स विच आर अपोज टू मोक्षा दे आर बीइंग डिस्कस्ड सो दैट इज द टॉपिक ऑफ दिस चैप्टर वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग दिस इज ए नोशन दिस योग वासिस्ट इज ए नोशन दस वाई जनरली ओनली वेरी फ्यू पीपल रीड ऑल ऑफ इट Uh, who have uh, the habit of speed reading or good in Sanskrit, etc. Mostly people read condensed versions. That's why Mahatmas they recognize that this is the importance of condensing it. If you don't condense, then whole of it will be lost. Because I mean, lost for the people. Because nobody can commit on uh, oneself to read all of it. And they look at this big volume, 
They give it up. Even before they begin it, they give it up. Because it is too big, you know. They give it up. And uh, uh, so they lose um, gems. So therefore, these Mahatmas, they strive in making condensed versions. So Swami Shivaranda Maharaj has done one beautiful condensed version, very small version. Very beautiful English also. He did it in English, flowing English. Uh, then was Swami Venkateshananda, a Sishya, a devotee of Shivaranda Maharaj himself, Shivaranda Ji. Venkateshananda is a great man. He did it in two volumes in English. It is uh, widely appreciated and followed. In Telugu, Vidya Prakashananda Giri of uh, Kalahasti, yesterday I was saying, he did a marvelous work in Telugu. He called it uh, Yoga Vasishtha Ratnakaram. Ratnakara is the ocean. But he is not bringing entire ocean, only the gems of that ocean he is bringing. So it's a marvelous book. In two volumes a skill. The abbreviated version is in two volumes. And then uh, I have come across a few more books uh, which condensed uh, this. So, so why should I lag behind? So I did a condensation of the Vaidagya Prakarana, which is before you. It, it is our own condensation. It is not borrowed from anywhere. Anyway. Then the next verse. Tamartha Dharma Tikrutanta Rabhi Kamartha Dharma Tikrutanta Rabhi Vasani Chalabarihina Pichalolam Vishranti Magachatu Kena Pumsaha so Pumsaha Chetaha. Chetaha. You can connect to easily. Not difficult really. Pumsaha Chetaha. Chetaha is mind. The mind of a person, the individual. The mind of a it is all about the mind. Because this mind is the obstacle. And the mind is the one which takes you there also. So Manayeva Manushyanam Karanam Bandha Moksha Yoho Bandhaya Vishaya Sangi Mukhyai Nirvishayam Manaha You have a mind in which all the sense pressures are loaded. That mind is the obstacle for moksha. And you make the mind free. Means in the mind there are no sense pressures. No sense pressures. Like space. The, in the life, some sense interactions will be there. In life, where you eat something, there is some sensation. You see something, sensations are there. But the vasanas generated by these sensations are absent. It is like what is sweet, there are hundreds of sweets. What is sweet do you like most? Sweet I like? I don't know. Hence in Vishaya. There is no Vishaya. The person may still end up eating a little sweet. That is not the point. There is no vishaya. And then uh, what kind of uh, bed or cart you like to sleep? What kind of cart? Any kind of cart is okay. There is vishaya like that. What kind of dresses you like? Whether polo shirts or what kind of shirts you like? Doesn't matter. Any shirt is okay as long as it is cotton shirt. No problem. Because this polyester is problem. <laughs> skin problem with the carbon is clean. So, like the nirvishaya, it is possible, that's why I am coming, it is possible. Nirvishayam manaha, mind is made free from all the vasanas. Because we create the vasanas, we can stop creating them. What you do, you can undo. If somebody else has done, you cannot undo it. But if you do it, you can undo it. So, Chirabhyastha Rama Samsara Vasa Janma Shata Janma Chirabhyastha Rama Samsara Vasana Rama asks These Vasanas ye kaha se aye? Where from did they come? He asked Then the Maharshi replies You created them by practicing them for a long time Chirabhyastha So you eat sweets from the childhood continuously eat and now you have a weakness for sweets. You created it. Nobody creates it. Bhagavan doesn't create, others don't create. You create it. Now you undo them. You have created these walls around you. Now you go and demolish them. 
No, no, I create Guru will demolish. Guru won't demolish. Guru will tell you to demolish. You have to demolish yourself. So, or God will demolish. No, God won't demolish. God won't do anything. He is the Upadrashta Anumanta. He, he just doesn't do anything. He will just watch. If you do good things, he will watch. If you do bad things, he will watch. So, God is a, not a karta. Srishti karta is an expression. Upachara. He is not a karma karta. He is karma adhyaksha. That is what God is. So, he doesn't do anything. He just watches. That is the atma. Anyway, so, pumsaha chetaha. It is the mind of the person. This mind of the person has to become quiet. Vishrantim agachatu. May it become quiet. For what? Without quietude of the mind, you will not be happy in life. You will be subjected to endless sorrow because it is the thought which breeds fear and sorrow. The thought. Thought breeds fear and sorrow. So, if the mind is uh, overacting or overdoing, or it is feverishly active, then you will not know what is peace of mind and you will not have any happiness in life. Shantamulaka saukshamulaka. So, you will know happiness only when the mind is quiet. And uh, you see, this person, he goes to the doctor with some cardiac problem, some heart problem. The doctor gives medicine or surgery, they do whatever, and then they give an advice. Don't get excited, don't become angry, don't get attached to anything. The doctor says, Dr. Dvesha, you avoid. They say, intense emotion, whether it is positive, which is called Raga, or negative, which is called Dvesha, you should avoid. The doctor says that. Then uh, these people ask, how can we avoid? Then you know what they say, do yoga. Do pranayama, asana pranayama, and then go to an ashram, and go to a swami, and learn Gita. This is what the doctors say. Really, in India they say that. In India some of the cardiologists, they run a center, side by side, where yoga, pranayama, Gita are taught. Just in the hospital only, in a corner, one swami will come and teach them. These recovering, convalescing patients. Because these people, they don't have any command over their minds. They are in, they are hit. very heavy is the samsara. A very heavy samsara weighs very heavy. Like uh, the weight laden ship, you know, the ship loaded with uh, goods. It is very heavily dipping into the ocean. Uh, moving slowly, but a heavy laden ship. People are like that. And uh, you ask them to sit and uh, breathe in slowly, they cannot do it. They cannot do it. You sit, they cannot do it. Vajrasana is there. Vajrasana is a simple asana. And uh, it is a very simple asana. What do you see in Japan? Japan? I never went to Japan, but we see Japanese people. They do two things. They sit in Vajrasana and drink a green tea. These three, two things only do. Japan means Vajrasana, green tea. Only two things, right? Only two things. And uh, men and women, they sit in Vajrasana, they don't sit in chain and all that. In Vajrasana they sit and drink the green tea. So it is called Vajrasana because it makes the body like Vajra. Vajra means very hard, diamond. Very hard, means very strong. Uh, so, uh, one time uh, in meditation session, uh, I sat in Vajrasana and asked all the people to sit in Vajrasana. Within five minutes I could hear, in a meditation session, I could hear grumblings. Hey, what is this? What is Vajrasana? I said they were all grumbling. Many of them. Then I told, okay, pause, give up, sit normally. So, what, how they sit? They sit like this. They, they have that thing, you know. The, that thing to sit like this. And then they sit like this. And then sit like this. Then do like this. Tattvamasi is going on. <laughs> Can you believe it? Eh? 
So, in fact, sometimes I feel I should make all of you sitting with Jirasana for some time. Really? I feel like that. Because I sit in Vajrasana for some time daily. I sit for ten minutes, I sit. I feel good about it. Because when you sit in Vajrasana, the back, neck and head, they remain straight automatically. You need not make any effort. Just worry about the back, it remains straight. That is the beauty of Vajrasana. If you sit in Sukhasana, then I have to tell, keep the back straight. Don't allow it to bend. Come on, keep it up. Like that you have to settle in between. I do that. Check your back one more time, tell it straight. I say that. Every seven, eight minutes I say that. Because I see backs bending. Whereas if you sit in Vajrasana, you can drop that instruction. Samam Kaya Shirogrivam is already accomplished. So, people are very heavy with samsara. Like, heavy laden ship. So, uh, chetaha. Therefore, it is very hard to discover peace and happiness in life. It is easy to discover wealth, to, to, to get wealth, to procure wealth. And to procure comforts, it is very, very easy. Whereas, eh, to get that inner, that inner comfort, which is the shanti, it is very hard. So, Pumsaha Chetaha, Kena Vishranti Magat Chetu. So, this mind of this individual, by what would it gain that quietude? That is the question. Why? What is so difficult about it? So, the question means it is very tough to acquire quietude. That is the meaning of that question. Why is so difficult? Because the mind is. This mind is a lolam. Lolam means very unsteady. Lola, very unsteady. You see, there is a, an ornament which the young girls wear. Uh, it is called lolaka. Because it is designed in such a way, it will be constantly moving. Even if she sits in Vajrasana, it will have some movement, because it is Lola. So the mind is a very fickle, chinchala, chalam, chalam, chinchala, double chala. So that is what the mind is. And that mind, by what would it discover? Quite sure. So why did it become like that in the first place? Huh? Mind is sattva guna. Mind means a sattva guna. Essentially it is sattva guna. Otherwise you will not be able to cognize. You are able to cognize it shows that mind is sattva. Sattva means knowledge. So knowingness, knowing. So purity, that is sattva. So mind is essentially sattva. Antakkarana is sattva. Physical body is tamas. And organs of action, they are like this. This is the scheme. Mind is essentially sattva, but we fill it, fill it with so many vasanas that it becomes like this, tajasic, hyperactive, and then it becomes a tamas, tamasic. Tamas means it becomes dull and it uh, becomes uh, slothful and uh, uh, there is a total identification with the physical body, that is the tamoguna. And then uh, food, eating food becomes uh, an important uh, pastime of life. Because tamoguna, you know, food is tamoguna. And uh, so body is tamoguna. And when mind is identified with uh, the body and runs after the food as a major goal of life, uh, at least as an important goal of life, uh, important uh, pursuit in life, uh, so then uh, that is what is called tamoguna, tamasa. Therefore the mind uh, disintegrates, descends or comes down, falls down, not comes down, falls down from sattva to rajas to tamas. Now, in a rajasic mind, there can never be any peace or any quiet, quietude. It is just not possible. Kena, Vishtanti, Magachatu, because it has become so unsteady, lola, like uh, the like the tail of a peacock. 
Barihina Pichano, Chalad Barihina Pichano. You just imagine a peacock walking. Chalad Barihina. A peacock moving around. So, can its tail remain steady? A crow's tail can remain steady, but not a peacock's tail, because it's a long tail, very heavy tail, long tail. So, it is a hanging uh, from the body due to its heaviness. That is the tail. It is not about the beauty and all that here, you know. It is about its unsteadiness, very unsteady. Chalad parihena pichyalolam chetaha. This is the mind of the guy, pumsaha chetaha. Kena vishranti magachyadu. Ye kaisa ho jayega, calm and quiet. Means, it doesn't become calm and quiet easily. Chattaha, that is the way. Now the question is, how did it arrive at that level? Being sattva, originally being sattva, how did it fall into the savages and the tamas? What is the problem? Because, kama artha dharma apti kritantaravhi kriyavhi Because of actions, kriyas. Karma vasana. See, people suffer because of karma vasana. It is called karma vasana. And that's why it is called karma bandhana. Vidyarthat karma nyatra. Lokoyam karma bandhana. This I try to explain uh, whenever the occasion comes. Because, you see, whenever I explain a particular thing there, it is just out of love, nothing more than that. I am not trying to show off, or even I am not trying to condescend, or out of a condescending attitude, no, never. Or I am not trying to pinpoint or anybody to disturb him, that is not the idea. The idea is, this is the truth, this is the vision, and you see it. When you see it, you make the others also see. It is a labor of love, nothing more than that. Anyway, so I see it clearly. What is it? Lokoyam karma bandhana. This human being, I am Lokaha, this human being is in the bondage of karma. Because he takes himself to be the karta and bhakta, but he is now done. He is cooked in the samsara. Because he takes himself to be the karta and bhakta, he defines, he derives the sense of self from the bhogas and from the actions. That is how he derives the sense of self. So suppose you say, I own a very luxurious car. Suppose you say that. That means what? You are deriving the sense of self from the upholstery of the car. What a silly thing to do. Wrong thing to do. So, uh, it is not about the car or its cost. It is about the vasana that you have created for yourself. The bhoga vasana. And then, uh, he derives his sense of self based on a particular job he does. He says, I have done this, I have done that, I am not giving example, you figure out example yourself. I have done this, I have done that. And he derives a sense of self from that. Now he is cooked, karta bhokta. So, karma bandhana, this is how the karma vasanas bind people. And this karma was, karma is not the problem. If it is a right karma, nithya karma or naimtika karma, it is not a problem. It doesn't mean all karmas are not a problem. Only selected karmas are not a problem. And you cannot avoid them also. You need not avoid them also. Nahi deha bhuta shikyam chittam karmani. You should not stop there. Ashesha taha. You should add that. It, it only, it doesn't mean, as long as you live, you cannot give up karma. Wrong. It, it conveys a very misleading impression. That is not what Sri Krishna is saying. He is saying, as long as you live, you cannot give up karma totally. That is what he is saying. Sheshataha. Means, you have to give up Nishiddha karma and Prayashtha karma and Kamya karma. All the three, you have to give up. So, and then you have to stay with Nityana Yuktika. Then you are free from Karma Bandhana. It is called Karma Yoga. But this person, Pumsaha Chetaha, this mind has acquired a heavy load of Karma Vasanas. 
क्रियाभिहि बिकॉज ऑफ द वेरियस कर्मास ही परफॉर्मड व्हाट आर दिस कर्मास क्रियाभिहि आदौ दिवसाने नेत्वा ही वाज लिविंग अ लाइफ इन द बिगिनिंग ऑफ हिज लाइफ एज अ ब्रह्मचारी एज अ गृहस्थ होल ऑफ हिज लाइफ नाउ ही अराइव्ड एट वन प्रस्था और सन्यासा यू कीप इट असाइड सो ही हैज अराइव्ड एट द रिटायरमेंट एज सो and uh, his uh, whole uh, life is uh, lived uh, with actions actions uh, what kind of actions the bind karma bandha so actions that are performed by the doer for the sake of enjoyment these are the actions of kriya bhihi so that's why the kriya bhihi is nicely described kama artha dharma apti krutantara bhihi that is the kriya bhihi so this is a karmas so i will uh, take the help of the tikagara adau dhanarjana bhoga trishna prabalyat kamartha dhyame va dharma vaptau krutantaraabhi adhikranta avakashaabhi laukika kriyaabhi so adau in the beginning of life In the beginning of life, life begins almost like when he is a brahmachari, the bachelor, in the teens, and then twenties. That is really when the life begins. And at that time, he has only two emotions, two goals mainly. Other things are there, getting a university degree, getting a job, etc. They are there, but they are subservient to two major uh, goals. They are. धनार्जना भोग तृष्ण मेकिंग मनी और वेल्थ एंड एंजॉइंग सेंस प्रोशंस दिस इज हाउ आवर लाइफ बिगिन्स यू नो नो बड इज एन एक्सेप्शन टू दिस सो दीज आर दि डॉमिनेंट डॉमिनेंट थिंग्स एंड देर फॉर भोग तृष्ण मीन्स काम धनार्जना मीन्स अर्थ अंड धन कामाध्याम धर्माप्त कृतांतराभिक्रांत अवकाशा इन बिट्वीन कामार्थ धर्माप्ति कृतांतरा द मेन फोकस इज ऑन कामांड अर्थ एंजॉयमेंट ऑफ प्लेस एंड मेकिंग वेल्थ इन बिट्वीन थोड़ा थोड़ा धर्म कृतांतरा इन बिट्वीन पुष ए लिटल धर्म इन बिट्वीन दिस इज हाउ ही हेज डन कामना धर्माथ कृतान धर्माप्ति कृतांतराभि इसी द कॉम्प्लेक्स कंपाउंड कामाप्ति अर्थाप्ति दीज आर द मेन थिंग्स धर्माप्ति मेक्स एन इंटरवल अकेशनली धर्माप्ति कृत अंतराभि कामाप्ति अर्थाप्ति इज द मेन सो दिस इज हाउ ही लाइफ ही लिव्ड हो लाइफ देवसाण नीतवा डे आफ्टर डे दिस इज हाउ ही लिव्ड सो मेक माने and enjoy pleasures and occasionally visit the temple <coughs> this is the formula as a samsari formula even god is also put into a slot so this is how they live and then they accumulate see here he is not addressing a person who commits crimes or adharma he is not addressing them They are not interested in Vedanta because uh, that is the I asked one time a Mahatma, why don't you include uh, the criminals and uh, puppies uh, who perform all kinds of uh, sinful actions? Uh, why don't you say anything about them? Why only pick up these people who occasionally visit a temple? Why you pick up these nice guys just because they come? You? So you attack them and all the criminals, uh, sinful people, uh, the. All these puppies of the world, they don't come anywhere near. They won't come to your satsanga. Therefore, uh, you need not uh, say anything. Poor guys, these nice, good-looking people, they come, and so now you go and attack them. Dharma, thakka, kama, thakka, dharma, thi, krutam, thara, bhi like that. What is this? See, the idea is uh, this is not a dharma shastra. In the context of a dharma shastra. so there will be do some don'ts you should do this you should not do that this is a punyam that is papam it will be like that but this is not dharma shastra it is a atma vidya and here even the good actions 
performed with a sense of doership for gaining a, a bhoga or an obstacle for gaining the knowledge of the self. If that is the goal that you are looking for, then you be prepared for some criticism of this kind. That is the idea. Therefore, now you got the verse, you got all of it. Nothing is leaves, nothing is left to be explained. So, he says, Kaya Vayova Sane. Means when you are young and middle aged, when the body is strong, you don't acquire Viveka and Vairagya, you only spend the whole life in Kama and Artha with occasional dharma. So, and now you are retired, old. Now you want the mind to be comfortable and happy and peaceful and quiet. How can it be? It will not be possible. Means you have to acquire uh, Viveka and Vairagya when you are here and healthy, when you are strong. You see, this is said many, in many places. This is said. So it was said in the Shastra, we were saying it all the time. Uh, but uh, there is always a small doubt. Why not do it after retirement, why, why, like all people are doing, are trying to do? Why not do it after retirement? Then uh, it dawned upon me one day, after retirement the body crashes. It just crashes. And when the body crashes, now you are uh, stuck with the body. So. You have to do something to the nose, some jaranati or whatever, or fifteen minutes you have to do, otherwise the nose doesn't function. Then uh, most of the teeth are gone, but whatever teeth are there, you have to protect them. Otherwise you have to go around the dentist whole life, rest of the life you have to go around the nose. So you have to do protection to the dentist. Therefore you have to protect them. So it is uh, another fifteen minutes job it is. And then the knees you have to apply some tylum and the leave it for some time and then do some uh, this and that is another fifth, half an hour. This is how <laughs> now value you do Viveka and Vairagya. There is no time left for any of that. Therefore, Viveka Vairagya have to be done. You see, better late than never. Better late than never. Only than never is better. <laughs> better late than never. So, otherwise, when the body crashes, it has a, a threshold, energy threshold or whatever, a hump, I think they call it. And the body reaches that hump and then it falls. And once it falls off that energy threshold, now it cannot, uh, it will hold you back. It won't uh, help you. And especially when uh, people live a very uh, life of uh, physical comforts, they are in for serious trouble. They are, uh, they are in for serious trouble. And uh, so the rest of the life they have to pay the price of uh, handling a, multi, a multitude of uh, diseases, a variety of diseases. Everything is a problem. No part is working. <coughs> So, therefore, you cannot do things after retirement. That's why Mahatmas used to exhort, don't wait till the body crashes. Uh, because after the body crashes, most of our energy will be gone in taking care of the body and keeping it uh, meaningful. Otherwise, uh, you have to do it. Otherwise, uh, you become sick and cause uh, more problems. So, the best thing is when uh, the body is uh, here and healthy, when you are strong, when you are uh, doing well, in the profession, etc., in family life also you are doing well. So this is the time to acquire Viveka Vairagya. That's why the Grahasthas are hammered with this Vairagya like that. Because that is the right time to get it. That is the spirit of it. You may say the verse sometime. Kama Artha Dharma Kriya-virādau-divasāni-nītvā 
विश्रागछतु केम ंग There is a ocean, and now tsunami is happening. That is the next illustration. So, like that, he jumps from one illustration to another illustration. Parnani jirnani yatha tarunam, the dry leaves of the trees. So, how they fall. So, another illustration. Uh, like that, eh? Yeah. You need a lot of energy to go through all this. जगत इज बोर्न एवरीथिंग इज बोर्न दिस इज द तार्किकास 
देन संख्या से जगत भवती ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन जगत हैपेंस इट इज बिकमिंग सो द प्रधान इज बिकमिंग द जगत प्रधान जगद रूपेण भवती सो जगत अस्ति जगत भवते अस्ति मीन्स ईज भवती मीन्स बिकम्स सो वेदांत इन्स डोंट से दैट बिकॉज एंड यू से अस्ति और भवती इट गिव्स ए सेंस ऑफ रियालिटी टू दी ब्लेसिड थिंग सो डोंट गिव इट बिकॉज इफ यू गिव इट यू हैव टू नेगेट इट लेटर सो बेटर नेगेट इट इन द बिगिनिंग इट सेल्फ सो सो दैट यू विल नॉट हैव प्रॉब्लम लेटर बिकॉज इसे वन महात्मा टोल्ड मई वेन यू आर सारोफुल वेन यू फेस ए डायलमा आर वेन यू आर रियली फीलिंग डिस्ट्रेस्ड यू जस्ट रिमेम्बर दिस जस्ट कॉन्टेम्पलेट ऑन दट मच स्पेस वन शुड हैव टू कॉन्टेम्पलेट ऑन दिस दिस लाइफ इज ए ड्रीम यू जस्ट कॉन्टेम्पलेट ऑन इट इज ए ड्रीम इवन दिस इवन दिस क्राइसिस विच इज गोइंग ऑन नाउ इन माई लाइफ दिस क्राइसिस इज नो डिफरेंट फ्रॉम ए ड्रीम यू थिंक ऑफ लाइक दैट आई मीन एट दैट मोमेंट यू थिंक एवरीथिंग विल हैपन दट इज नॉट वॉट आई एम सेंग You should have the correct background of all that, so that you know vairagya and viveka must be there. So you you only remind yourself why you worry, sir. This is all a dream. Why to worry? Like that, you remind yourself. You just remind yourself. Already, the burden of sorrow becomes half, becomes less. Therefore, one has to constantly remind oneself. That this jagat don't say asti, say drushya te. Because it is a drushya jagat. It is not a sad jagat. Sad jagat means jagat asti. It is sad jagat. It is not sad jagat. You should not say satvat jagat. Jagat mitya. If you say satvat jagat also, then the way to worship God. So, in fact. You will be able to appreciate the reality only when the mithyatpan shchayam is there. Jagan mithyatpan shchayam, because reality is not something you will gain. It is not something you will reach. It is not something other. It is already you. It is already now. It is you. Then what is the problem? The problem is you get distracted away from the reality. By you are appreciate you are thinking that these things are real. The mind which has this notion of reality or the things of the world, it distracts you away from your own reality. Therefore, as far as reality is concerned, you need not do anything about it. You need not make any effort to know it or be it or gain it or reach it. No effort is required. All effort is required. In a, that in settling the issue of the jagat, so there alone your effort is required in the form of viveka and vairagya. So the whole effort begins with the correct appreciation, drishyate, drishyate, na jayate, na bhavati, na asti, just drishyate, drishya jagat. This is called drishya viveka. Vedantins. They emphasize on drugdrushya viveka. There are some tarkikas who say jayate. For them, it is karya karana bhava because the jayate, kahan se aaya, from where uh, karya karana bhava. For them, karya karana, drushya the karya karana bhava is not so important because the, the blessed thing is only drushya. So for for the tarkikas, it is jayate. therefore karya karana bhava uh, and then uh, for the tasankhyas it is bhavati again karya karana bhava what is becoming this jagat so transformation implies karana and karya so pradhana is the karana like that satkarya vada it is so and uh, these people the tarkika sa satkarya vada so for them uh, It is a, a, an effort to understand the jagat which is real. That is, uh, sankhya santarkikas. Whereas in Vedanta, 
The entire uh, process is on appreciating the unreal nature of Jagat. What do you mean by unreal? There also you should be clear. Unreal means uh, drushyate matu asti. That is unreal. It is appearing, but it is nothing more than an appearance. Mere appearance. Mere appearance. Only mere appearance. But you are naming it, giving a name to it. That name is not the name of a real thing. It is just namesake. And it is mere appearance. Rupa, mere appearance. Nama, namesake. Nama dheya. It is not Nama. Nama dheya. Dheya means mere. Nama, matrathe dheya prachayaha. So mere name and mere appearance. Rupyate it rupa. Mere appearance and mere name. So, Mithyatma Nishchayaha. In fact, Mahatma said, advice meditation. I was speaking the sixth chapter of Gita in Bahamas. At that time I was discussing the meditation in detail. That is the topic, you know. So, to, to start meditation, when you sit for meditation, people complain that mind is getting distracted. You see, don't comply. So complaining makes the mind into an enemy. Don't complain. You look into it. So, uh, so see why it is getting distracted. It is getting distracted because uh, you have a satyatva nishcaya of the jagat. You, you are uh, you assume that jagat is real. Means there are uh, things to be gained in the jagat and there are actions to be done in the jagat. There are things to be enjoyed in the jagat is the bhogavasana. There are actions to be performed uh, now or later. This is the karma vasana. And the karma vasana and bhoga vasana put together become such a huge distraction for you. You will not be able to meditate. That is the problem. Therefore the karma vasana and bhoga vasana you have to neutralize. You have to get hold of them and you have to neutralize them. So how to do it? Jaram nichatva nishcayena karma vasana bhoga vasana nirakriyate. Like that Tikatara says, so, sit in meditation and then look at yourself and then uh, you be aware of the world in which you live. This world has, uh, apparently has things to offer to me, bhogas, but I am not interested in any of these bhogas. I am done with these bhogas. In Vedantic meditation, self-suggestion or auto-suggestion acquires a critical importance, auto-suggestion, because here we uh, it is meditation is purification of the mind, nothing else. You are not gaining anything here. So auto-suggestion is critically important. Therefore, you suggest to yourself, in this world, uh, what, what is this world? A collection of bhogas. I am not interested in any of the bhogas. Then uh, there are a number of uh, jobs that are to be accomplished by me. Now, I am not the doer. The jobs that are there in the world, they are un- as unreal as the world itself. And therefore, I need not accomplish anything in this world. You see, I don't want to mince the words. I want to say very precisely. So, now I say it. I need not enjoy anything of this world. I need not accomplish anything of this world. Now, if if it sounds to you as something against a worldly life or whatever, I cannot help it. So, this is how it is. And so you, you, you tell yourself this, and now you sit for meditation. I mean, so it means now you continue meditation. It will work wonderfully. <laughs> this is what we call Vichatvanishtaya, Jagan Vichatvanishtaya. Do that first. I in that first. And then the meditation. Then the chances of getting distracted are less. And you do it again and again, Abhyasa, then you will find that uh, the mind, uh, you sit for meditation and you come out of the meditation, there, there doesn't seem to be big difference. Sit for meditation and uh, keep it quiet, it is quiet, and come out of the meditation, you are looking around and doing something, still the mind is quiet. It is not too much distracted. Some mind is needed for to walk from here to there. That much mind is there. More than that, there is nothing space like. It loses all its fickleness. So, then you don't have an issue with the mind. You abide jnanena atashakalpena. 
విషయం వన్ లుక్ చేయదు ఏదైనా ఆకాశ కల్పన ధర్మాన్ యో గగనోపమాన్ జ్ఞేయాభిన్నేన సంబుద్ధ తమ వందే ద్విపదాం వరం దరిద్రీ వ్యాసుకోపాదాచార్య బిగినింగ్ ఆఫ్ అలాత శాంతి తమ వందే ద్విపదాం వరం హీస్ ది జమ్ ఆఫ్ హ్యూమన్ బీయింగ్స్ అండ్ మై ప్రాస్ట్రేషన్ అండ్ టు హిమ్ హూ ఇస్ దాట్ హూస్ మైండ్ ఈస్ ఇస్ స్పేస్ లైక్ ఏనా ఆకాశ కల్పేన జస్ట్ స్పేస్ లైక్ హిస్ మైండ్ ఈస్ స్పేస్ లైక్ వాట్ ఈస్ దేర్ ఇన్ స్పేస్ దేర్ ఇస్ నథింగ్ ఇన్ స్పేస్ స్పేస్ కంటైన్స్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ బట్ నథింగ్ ఎఫెక్ట్స్ ద స్పేస్ సో ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఈస్ ఆర్గనైజ్ బట్ నథింగ్ స్టిక్స్ నాన్ స్టిక్ నాన్ స్టిక్ యూ నో ప్యాన్ నాన్ స్టిక్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఈస్ ఆర్గనైజ్ నథింగ్ స్టిక్స్ దట్ ఈస్ ది మైండ్ సో జగన్ మిత్యాత్మనిశ్చయ జీ ఫర్ వెదాంతిన్స్ జగన్ మిత్యాత్వం ఇస్ దేర్ ప్రెడెన్ బటస్ దట్ ఈస్ దేర్ లైఫ్ ఐ టెల్ యూ దట్స్ వైన్ ఇట్ కమ్స్ ఐ వి గో అట్ ఇన్ లిటిల్ డీపర్ విచ్ఛేదం దృశ్యతే కించి జగత్ స్థావర జంగం ఈ వెరీ ప్రిసైజ్ ఇట్ డజన్ సే వాట్ ఎవర్ జగత్ ఈస్ దేర్ హీ డజన్ సే హీ సేస్ దృశ్యతే సో బికాజ్ ఎస్ ఆర్ దిఖావట్ హై దృశ్యత దిఖావట్ ఆర్ నథింగ్ ఎల్స్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ దృశ్య నథింగ్ మోర్ దాన్ దట్ ఎత్ర దృశ్యతే తత్ర సృష్టి అండ్ దెన్ దెన్ నో నాట్ ఈవెన్ దట్ యా దృష్టి సైవ సృష్టి దట్ ఈస్ ద నెక్స్ట్ స్టెప్ ఎత్ర ఏగైనా ఆధారాధీన భావ వయాల్ యా దృష్టి సైవ సృష్టి సో యోగ వాసిష్ట ఈజ్ ఎ దృష్టి సృష్టి ప్రధాన కాదు ప్రధాన కీప్ ఇట్ మై యా యూ హ్యావ్ టు కమ్ టు దిస్ మాండుఖ్యా బికాజ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ దృశ్యతే సృష్టి వాట్ ఈస్ ది సృష్టి దిఖావట్ దట్ ఈస్ ది దృష్టి సృష్టి వాట్ ఈస్ ది జగత్ వాట్ ఈస్ ది క్రియేషన్ without drishti ikhavas nothing more than that tat sarvam all of it again don't uh, create a level in that tat sarvam put sarvam so tat sarvam asthiram asthiram means asthayi that is the word sthayi sthayi bhava an emotion which persists that is called sthayi bhava వ్యభిచారి భావ ఎన్ ఇమోషన్ దట్ అపియర్స్ ఫర్ ఎ వైల్ అండ్ గోస్ అవే దట్ ఈస్ వ్యభిచారి భావ దిస్ ఈస్ హౌ ద పోయిట్స్ ద పోయిటిక్స్ టాక్ అబౌట్ రసాల్ దట్ సో సెంటిమెంట్ అండ్ ఆల్ దట్ స్థాయి ఇన్ ఇండియా ఆల్సో ది గవర్నమెంట్ అపాయింట్స్ కమిటీస్ అండ్ ఎ పర్టికులర్ కమిటీ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ స్థాయి కమిటీ మీన్స్ స్టాండింగ్ కమిటీ ఇట్ స్టేస్ ఇట్ వోంట్ గో అవే ఇట్ స్టేస్ అదే సర్టన్ అదర్ కమిటీస్ they do a small job and they dissolve themselves they once the job is over the sri krishna committee it finished its job now it is dissolved it is no more existing so thai thai or sthira now what about jagat how does it look like to you it looks like sthira yeah not so of asthira asthai it is a very very unreal real means rahana hai what what is what persists that is what is real that is uh, this doesn't uh, persist it doesn't stay thai means stay doesn't stay it appears and disappears like uh, uh, the flash of lightning it appears and disappears that is what the world is one mahatma used to ask used to ask are bhai what is your age 40 50 in life till now could you hold on to anything anything could you hold on to your young childhood could you hold on to your youth could you hold on to that all the excitement of marriage 
all the excitement of children, could you hold on to anything? Could you hold on to the bank balance? Could you hold on to the sense pleasures that you have picked up and enjoyed so many pleasures you have enjoyed? Could you hold on to any one of them? You tell one thing which you could hold on to. You point out one thing. So, a Vaidika, when he is reciting Veda, it is a great excitement. He cannot hold on to it. The excitement wears out. And later, all that Veda he has by heart read, he slowly loses and he feels guilty about it. Just I am telling you, even the good things you cannot hold on to, the undesirable things you cannot hold on to, anything you cannot hold on to. Like uh, that's why this is son in law, they say, son in law syndrome is there. You know, in Telugu, they don't say alludu, they say kotta alludu. <laughs> Only his son in law, first time. And later, he loses all that importance. Second time he goes, he loses all the importance. Only first time he loses. You cannot hold on to anything. And Kalidasa, in one place, he says, Pidyante in Avijnan Sakuntala. So Pidyante Gruhina Kathamu Tanaya Vishlesha Dukhayarna Vaihi. That is the fourth. Yasyati Jadya Shakuntala. So beautiful verses. Yasyati Jadya Shakuntala. Chinta Vidyarnam Manaha. Something like that. You cannot, uh, you cannot put another word in Kalidasa's verse. The same word should come. So today, Shakuntala will be leaving. He put the fixed the date for Shakuntala to go to Dushyanta in the city. This is in the forest hermitage, you know. So today Shakuntala will go there. Yasyatyadya Shakuntala. Iti, this uh, mind is filled with uh, so much of unhappiness. I mean, uh, not unhappiness, so a kind of distress and a heaviness. Uh, and uh, you see, I never, uh, I, I'm not the father of this girl. I only took care of her. And uh, I, I am a sannyasi, a brahmachari. Kanva, Kanva is a brahmachari, is a sannyasi, is a tapasvi. A person of hostilities living in the forest. And uh, I took care of this child, I reared her. And now she is going to her husband's place. And I feel so distressed and so heavy. Then, Pidyante Gruhinaha. Gruhinaha means the family people. They give birth to the daughter and bring her up. And then hand over to a young man to live together. And the girl, the young lady moves away. How could the the family people feeling uh, that sorrow? Tanaya Vishlesha means a separation from the dear data, Dukhai. How much they must be feeling sorrowful? And then he puts a, a small adjective there. Small, uh, two syllable word. Tanaya Vishlesha Dukhai Navai. And the verse is closed. Nava means first time. Only first time. The daughter is leaving home first time. There, there are tears on everybody's face. On everybody's face there are tears. Once a young girl who was playing before us, when I was teaching Vedanta and Sanskrit, Sahitya, etc., this young girl, she used to bring tea. Our class is one and a half hours class and we are rewarded with a cup of tea after one hour or forty-five minutes, in old Alva, the tea comes. And so this young girl, uh, the Indian young girl wear a particular kind of dress, you know. So running, she walks very quickly because she is very proud of doing this job. Swamiji ko tea kila tea. And a dozen people are there. She gives tea to all of them. In old Alva, they used to serve tea. Whosoever attends the class gets a cup of tea. And so she used to serve. And when she comes walking, you can hear the sound because there was an anguish, etc. Ting ting. She says she is coming. Oh, she is coming. Now tea is served. I stop the verse then and there. And I get, uh, wait for my reward. 
So this girl who was playing before us, serving to us, she is getting married. Now she got married. Who is that girl? How do I know? Except that she comes in some steel. I don't know her. She is not a relative or any such thing. She got married. And I was there. Not in marriage. Marriage, three days marriage. On the third day, so I went to bless her. And that was the time when she is leaving. So the marriage was over. Then I went. I don't know. I don't go into the marriage. So, and she was leaving. And there were tears on everybody's in everybody's eyes. Even the neighbors have tears because this girl was going into the neighbor's home also. Then uh, I thought I am free from all these emotions and there were tears in my eyes. Oh, this girl who was serving tea for us all these months and years, this young girl is going for a new life. There were tears in our eyes, in my eyes. What to speak of the parents? Now why is he? Only first time. <laughs> Then she comes. When she comes, she becomes pregnant and then she comes. That was the old-fashioned way. When she comes. Now the child is born. In the third month, the parents are not in a hurry to send her away. Till the third month arrives. Then in the third month, the husband, I mean the father asks the wife, in the night time he asks, Mrs. Sanila, when is he planning to take the daughter? <laughs> Then she says, what is the hurry? Only third month. But then some girls go in third month. Yeah, but some girls go in the fifth month also. What is your problem? <laughs> okay, then let it be fifth month, another two months extra expenditure for him. <laughs> because yes, yes, poor people, you know, Indian people means middle class people, lower middle class. Extra expenditure, this child, every day extra milk has to be purchased. Milk is not easily available in those days. So, second time when she is going, the jetka comes, means the, the cart drawn by the horse, it comes. And the girl and the child, they are going. The parents are ecstatic. <laughs> the Kalidasa knows it. And that's why he says, Pigya, now you hear that sentence? Pigyante bruhina kathannu. Nu means vitarke. How could they may be feeling? Bruhina kathannu tamaya vishlesha dukkhaihi navai nava. Therefore, that intense love for the daughter, which makes us very sad when the daughter is going to her in-laws home, the, we don't even hold on to that sentiment. Even that will go away. And second time when she is going, eh, everybody is happy. And eh, if she comes quite frequently, suppose she comes again within six months, mm-hmm. then the neighbor says, well, why she came now? <laughs> she went six months back. She is not supposed to come uh, second time. There are so many things associated with it. Therefore in life, what is it that you hold on to? You tell me one thing, you don't hold on to anything. And so the same thing will apply to what we assume that we are holding on to at the present time. You can't hold on to anything. It will all go away. That is how the life is. Therefore it is asthiram. Asthiram. Tat sarvam asthiram. Brahman. Maharshi. This whole thing is asthiram. So, then what kind of thing is svapna sangha, sangama, sannibham. Sannibham means very much like, similar to meeting in a dream. This brahmachari, he had a dream. Brahmachari and Grahastha. I said Brahmachari because the type of dream that I am going to describe is like that. And uh, this guy is waiting to get married. And so he is now dreaming. And in the dream, he marries. He gets married. This is described in, in uh, Bhadaranyaka also. In dream, he gets married. And now he marries. And uh, uh, then uh, he is very happy, big marriage, this and that. Swapna Sangama. Now he had a daughter and he has a son, all those things. And then he wakes up. <laughs> and he wakes 
This is what life is. It is nothing real to it. It is Swapna Sangha Sangha. So this uh, merchant, uh, he wanted uh, to purchase uh, oil, oil dabba, 20 kg oil pack. And so he purchased it and uh, he asks for a coolie. Coolies are there who carries this oil uh, on his head. It has to be carried on the head and brings it to the home of the uh, this merchant. And uh, the, the, uh, the charge is one rupee. One rupee has to give. Now they are walking. And the merchant is walking in the front with his umbrella and all that. <laughs> now this man is walking behind. While walking his mind started imagining, daydreaming. This is called daydreaming. People daydream, generally they sit and daydream. <laughs> now he is walking and daydreaming. Why? Because he need not find, check where is he going and all that. He has to just walk behind the merchant. So the problem of finding out where he is going, that attention is not required. So, if somebody else is driving the car, now you can daydream, sit and daydream. <laughs> he is walking and daydreaming. This is rupee. Rupee is a valuable currency, very valuable amount, good amount it is. So one rupee I am getting today. It's a good earning. And I will purchase a dozen eggs. Each egg is one beda, two anas. So eight eggs you will get, not dozen, eight eggs. And I will hatch them nicely. And so eight hen will come. And then I will grow them well. And so they will start giving yielding eggs again. So each egg gives at least four of them. So thirty-two eggs I will have. And the yach, again hatch. And so thirty-two chicken or hen or whatever you call it. And then each of them will give four. So hundred and twenty-eight. And like that a day comes when I will have a big hatchery. And I will be the chairman or the head of that hatchery. Making a lot, loads of money. Where are we? Yeah, loads of money. And uh, so, and then I will get married. Now uh, nobody gives uh, his daughter to me, but when I become rich, they will be standing in queue. <laughs> and so I will select one beautiful young lady as a rich uh, father and get married to her. Then I will have two sons, and that, uh, one son and one daughter. And then, uh, like that. And I did not study, I did not get education, whereas I won't allow my children to, I will send them to a good school. And if the son or daughter, if they do mischief not going to the school, like I did in my children, I will punish them. I will not allow that. And so he, he, he pushes the boy into the school bus. Go! You cannot avoid the school today. Go to the school. Like that he pushes the boy into the school bus or the rickshaw which takes the boy to the school. And in the process, this oil dabba falls down. <laughs> Hits the ground. Now all the oil is gone. Then the merchant hears the sound and he turns. And he sees all the oil is on the ground. Oil on the ground means you cannot get back. Rice means you can get back. Oil you don't get back. It's all gone on the, on the footpath, you know, muddy path. Then the merchant says, Are you fool? You have spoiled ten rupees worth of oil. You made me lose ten rupees worth of oil. Then he says, You lost only ten rupees worth of oil. I lost. A big hatchery <laughs> and a lot of wealth, a wife and two children, entire family I lost. What you lost is nothing. That is what he says. I, I sincerely submit that we are in no different situation. Svapna Sangama Sangama. Life is like a long dream. Dirgha Svatna Mimam Vidhi Dirgha Mvachitta Vibhramam It's a long dream or if you want a better description or a different description, it's a long hallucination.
చిత్త విప్రం ఇట్ ఇస్ నో రియాలిటీ టు దాట్ అదే ఆత్మ ఇస్ రియల్ అండ్ దట్ ఆత్మ హ్యాపెన్స్ టు బి ఈశ్వర హిమ్ సెల్ఫ్ సో వన్ హ్యాస్ టు రికగ్నైజ్ దిస్ ట్రూత్ సో స్వప్న సంగమ సన్నిభం యదంగ మధ్య సంగీతం కౌశేయ స్రగ్విలేపనై దిగంబరం తదేవశ్వ దూరే విషరితావటే